big doesn't even begin to describe the size of the Natacoke, Ontario power generating facility. Once the largest coal burning plant in North America, the footprint of this now decommissioned operation is enormous. The powerhouse is comprised of a massive 1800 foot long turbine hull, which has already been demolished mechanically, as well as four two boiler structures, each coming in at over 210 feet high, 153 feet wide, and 390 feet long. Combined, the buildings and service corridors come in at a staggering 1,800 feet in length and house eight giant boilers that are surrounded with an incredible amount of heavy steel, conveyors, and machinery that at one time could produce annually enough energy to power 2.5 million households. In addition to the boiler houses, two SCR structures will also be brought down. They come in with impressive measurements of their own at 200 feet high, 164 feet long, and 105 feet wide. But as OPG transitions to more modern, clean energy sources, the Natacoke plant has seen its last piece of coal burned, and this land on the shores of Lake Erie is being repurposed. It's a big structure. Uh, it's a complicated uh, infrastructure associated with the building. And we were a significant contributor uh, during our heyday of operation to the demands in the province of Ontario. The outfit responsible for bringing this behemoth to its knees, Delson Hayne. Ontario Power went to the street on a request for a proposal for demolition contractors. There were a number of proponents evaluated uh, and the Delson Hayne Environmental Services were selected. Uh, they were viewed to be at the top of the game and I view them and OPG as having a good working relationship around the end goal of creating uh, the brownfield that will be here in another year. So Delson Aim, top notch. Delson Aim began this job back in February of 2018 with a successful blast demolition of the 650 foot high twin stacks. After cleanup of the stacks, Delson Ames' focus shifted to the main buildings. Preparations began immediately to make the rest of the facility disappear. The method being used, a controlled implosion. It's, it's huge, it's, uh, it's a big facility. It's got a lot of floors, seven stories I believe. Seeing it on TV, actually, it, it doesn't give it justice. With conventional ground equipment unable to reach the highest point of the buildings, Dynamite is the solution to bring it down to a manageable height. When you see the siding has been removed, that's how high we can go with our conventional equipment. So we've got to be able to drop the building a uh, hundred and something feet so we can then go back with our machines and start now sorting through all that mess. There's been definitely a lot of preparation work so we can get to the stage where we're at right now. We had to finish up uh, the asbestos abatement. That was completed around the end of January of this year. We had to do a very, very big cleanup of any hazardous waste and materials that was there. Did a lot of demolition and prepared the buildings so that we can start installing the dynamite over the next couple of weeks. Preparation's always key, right? And it does take a lot of time. It involves a lot of people. We had a close to 160 guys at one point working here. If you don't have your people dedicated to these projects, you're not going to have a safe outcome. And a safe outcome is paramount on jobs this massive, especially when they involve explosives. So right now, in this point of the demolition of the powerhouse, we're actually installing our explosives. We are following instructions from the blaster in charge to make sure that our tasks is 100% completed, following the Explosives Act and the construction regulations. This is very critical work and in doing so we are taking our time and working safely throughout this portion of the job. Along with ensuring a safe job site, the surrounding areas must be protected as well. We have that solar farm. We want to try to protect anything from affecting that solar farm. So that could be dust, that could be some concrete, that could be steel. We don't want to be projecting to that side and, and, and damaging their panels. So we've had to build this sea container wall, or the Great Wall. As you can see by the brackets that we've designed and installed, 
we know that it's going to be pushed back. In terms of our compliance with the environment on site, we have a four bay here just south of the building that we are responsible to maintain and make sure that the water quality is at par. Um, in doing so, we've installed a thermogreen cover onto the water to mitigate any dust from being trapped into the water. We've set up a steel structure just south of that portion to make sure that any shrapnel as well does not end up in the water. As with any major job outdoors, there will need to be some cooperation from Mother Nature. Nelson Aim is on top of that as well. For the last couple of months, we've been monitoring the wind. We need proper wind directions uh, blowing from north to south. We've set up our own weather station. We're tracking every couple of hours wind direction, temperatures, so we can get a feel for what we might come across, like in terms of weather conditions that might restrict uh, us from blasting on the days that we want to blast. And so we need these proper wind conditions so that we don't affect any of the residents around. In the week leading up to demolition day, the crew continues to methodically wire up the rest of the structures. It's a sophisticated setup to bring down buildings of this size. Each column will have to be fitted with two charges. Uh, what we're doing, we're building uh, what we call kick charges. We have already installed the linear shape charges, which are the cutting agents. So once the linear shape charge cuts the flange of the column on both sides, we use these uh, charges milliseconds after the cut is done, and this will act and kick the column out of joint, so it will just collapse. As the team continues to wire up the building with explosives, additional protection is added to ensure a perfect detonation pattern. Once we've installed the dynamite and the shape charges, then we put these protective covers around these boxes, try to contain the shrap metal from blasting off, and actually also try to protect the next column so that charge doesn't damage the deck cord or the shape charge on the other column. Once these are done, then uh, box covers go on, wrapped in conveyor belt, detonators are placed, and sequencing is uh, the last step. There's uh, 43 different series of delays set up in groups of columns. Total, we're looking at 13,000 milliseconds to totally energize the entire structure. But at 8,000 milliseconds is when the actual first charges go up. So all told, we're looking at uh, about 21 seconds to have all the charges detonate. 25, 27 seconds to have the structure roll over. The crew finishes the installation of the explosives and all protective measures are in place. Delson Aim is ready to bring this aging behemoth to its knees. But as day breaks on blast day, Mother Nature throws them a curveball. The winds are just too high and unfavorable to blast. Delson and AIM meet to go over their contingency plan. They're on standby in case the winds change for the better, but the new target blast day will be in two days' time, when it's predicted the weather will be favorable. We just finished our meeting this morning. We're not blasting today. The winds are not in our favor. We're gonna take this opportunity to go around and double check things, just to make sure that everything is good to go. We're doing our thing, we get everything ready and just wait for the winds. Well, double check and double check again, make sure everything is okay and uh, when the moment comes, uh, we ready. After days of waiting and checking over the site, Thursday has arrived, and finally, the winds want to cooperate. Right now, as it stands, the weather's good, so we are at go. I'm gonna be monitoring real weather as we go along. So we're gonna get the gears going right now. Isidro, you're gonna get your team. You're gonna meet just outside now with Tristan, with your security team. Yeah. So when Tristan comes on the radio and says, all stations clear, he's gonna check every single station, yeah. starting with the water. One minute. Three short blasts on my mark, three, two, one. 10 second warning. Now, 
one long blast, five seconds, and then I'll have the countdown on the radio. And so explosive doesn't work. If there's any emergency, anybody with a radio, get on the radio. Okay, but other than that, nobody should be using the radios that I issued this morning. And that's it. Just have a safe day and let's do this. The site crew is briefed on the impending blast and the wind is holding steady. Final checks are underway. T minus 45 minutes. At three, please confirm the air is closed. Three at three is closed. After their last minute checks, the team springs into action readying the site for the big moment. Okay guys, I need everybody behind the sea cans, eh? All stations, we're gonna do one minute. We've got wind conditions right now that are favorable. On my mark, sound for one minute. Three, two, one, sound for one minute. stations 10 second countdown one long blast now blast imminent in 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 fire Stand by, stand by until further notice. How's that feel? <laughs> My heart's pumping. Feels great. Last is over, everything went good. Uh, everything is at the right height that we needed. And uh, man, it's just gonna be a great day today. It's gonna be relaxing. It's a lot of stress that goes through a project like this or an implosion like this because a lot of things could go wrong, but luckily uh, we had no issues. You know, we're dealing with a very competent and knowledgeable contractor that uh, is performing according to our expectations. And uh, everything went well and there were no issues. And that's what we expected and that's what we got. We spent the last, since probably January of this year, preparing everything for the blast. All the engineering and all the time we've devoted to uh, you know, reviewing the engineering plans and developing the engineering plans with all the parties involved, it went completely without a hitch. Uh, it went exactly as planned. It's down. Finally. Once towering at over 200 feet and out of the reach of machines, these buildings have now been reduced to a pile of scrap half the size. I want to thank every single worker that's been involved with this project, every engineer, every consulting firm that we've uh, worked with uh, on a safe execution of this project. Despite the fact that there is still an incredible amount of rubble to sort through, separate and ship out, things are much more manageable for the machines. With precision planning and expert execution, this blast can't be considered anything but a giant success and it couldn't have been done without the great team from Delson Inc.